one way or the other with whomever wants to play, Jim Nance. Johnny Majors and Tennessee at one end of the field. Opposite side, the Irish are ready. And John, you'll recall Lou Holtz told us, I guarantee you, we're going to play well on defense against Tennessee. His words last night. Here comes the number one rank, Notre Dame fighting Irish. Southland band on the field right now forming the team which the Tennessee Volunteers will enter the field. And the volunteers coming up. Stay with us, folks. For a football game. The guys love it in this. Cloudy skies, 46 degrees, wind chill of 39. Been raining for the last day and a half, but it stopped early this morning. Now, Tennessee will be kicking right away to Notre Dame. And the Rocket. They'll set the tone early. Will they kick to the Rocket? Joey Chapman handles the kickoff chores for the Volunteers, who won the toss and deferred to the Irish receive. Three-step kick. Knocked high into the air. Then it comes to Dorsey Levins. Across the 30. Dorsey Levins to the 40-yard line. Excellent starting field position for the Notre Dame Fighting Irish. Dave Thomas on the tackle. Rick Meyer, quarterback to Notre Dame. He's joined in the backfield today by a couple of seniors. They're going with Brooks and Waters to start it out. The receivers, Tony Smith and the Rocket. And six foot seven inch, Derek Brown is the tight end. Ricky Waters for a gain of seven and tackled by Ernest Fields. Offensively, they've got the veteran senior there, Mike Held, 6'4", 267 pounds, both sides of him. You've got Yurkovich and Tim Ryan. Tim Ryan from Kansas City, Missouri. Outside is McGuire and Sandry starts for Justin Hall today. Justin Hall, the junior, has a back problem. Second down and three. Movement and the flag. Have a dead ball foul. Offensive lineman moving into the neutral zone. Five yards coming. Notre Dame was hit with the flu bug this week. Rick Meyer had it for about 24 hours. Here's the defense that Meyer and company faces today. Mark Moore and Kerry Bailey on the defensive line for the Volunteers. Chris Mims and Chuck Smith are defensive ends. Sean Walker is the middle linebacker. Hardy and Fields, the other backers. Second and eight after the five-yard step off. Waters. Knocked down by Ernest Fields and Chris Mims. Outstanding play by Fields, too, getting rid of the blocker and coming up outside and containing. This is the number one ranked secondary in the country with Lincoln and Miley, the cornerbacks, the safeties. Inside, Carter and Fletcher. Carter may be about as good as you see in the country. Fletcher, he's not as fast as some of the linebackers, and he's going to be matched up in that safety position a lot of times today with Rockets, so we'll keep an eye on that matchup for you. Keep an eye on Dale Carter, number 18, out of the Tennessee secondary. Third down and five, the Rocket to the near side. Rodney 
Culver's in the game. Meyer will keep and lose yardage. Perry Bailey, number 53, hits Meyer, and the Irish will punt. Chuck Smith made it available, though, Jim. The right defensive end came outside, forced the play back inside to Bailey, who was pursuing. Carter, we mentioned him out of the secondary. He's the return man also. Punt returns and kick returns, and Craig Hendrick will punt to him. Line punt. Carter from the 11. Near the 30, an excellent return. Kowalkowski on the special teams tackle after an 18-yard run back. Andy Kelly is the quarterback for Tennessee. He is joined by Roland Coles, the fullback, Tony Thompson, the diminutive tailback. Pickens and Harper will also see Anthony Morgan at receiver today for Tennessee. And Mark Adams will play tight end. But they come out with three receivers right away. Vince Moore is the extra one. He's in motion. Play action. And is open at the 35, racing up the sideline. It's Tony Thompson. And into Notre Dame territory. of Michigan, Michigan State, they saw Stanford. Stanford would run the safety out and then come underneath the coverage, and that's exactly what Tennessee wants to do early. They did it on this play, coming underneath the linebackers, and they want to continue to do it. Thompson with the big gainer there. Tim, that was a gain of 30 on the first play for Tennessee. Flags fall, setting up another short pass to Thompson. Can't hold on. Now they have started in the secondary at Notre Dame. George Foreman and Rod Smith. They were the two question marks. Greg Davis and Todd Light we knew would start in the Notre Dame secondary. Well, the secondary, quite frankly, has had a lot of problems, giving up a lot of passing yards. They play deep, they play soft, they allow the passes underneath, which we've already seen. George Foreman to your right. He was the starter in the first game of the season against Michigan. Dead ball, ball start, movement offensive line. So they'll move Tennessee back. Holtz has taken over the Irish defense, so he's personally spending more time in practice coaching it, making game plans, making the calls, and the defense has changed since the beginning of the year. Defensive coordinator Gary Darnell had put in a Florida-type defense, attack style, high risk, high reward, right to his left. But Holtz has now gone back to the shuffle, read, and react scheme he's used to in the past, and he's doing all the defensive coaching. Darnell right there is making the calls. Second and 10 for Tennessee. Shuffle pass to Vince Fulwell. Moore means nothing at all. Bob Dahl hit him first. This is an excellent offensive line for Tennessee, Tim. It's also one of the biggest in the country. Here's an excellent technician right here, John Fisher, the center. On both sides of him, Muslinski and Baird. Stoll will actually start in place of Baird because of a neck injury that he got last week. And then you've got perhaps both tackles will be first-rounders in the NFL, McCray and Davis. And both those guys are huge. McCray's 291 and Davis is 310 pounds. Both quick. Third and 11. To Pickens on the sideline, short of the first at the 34-yard line. Hit by Rod Smith. Jim, we're focusing in now on the quarterback. We're also watching the receivers. But right now, Tennessee's offensive line is just dominating the line of scrimmage. They're giving Kelly all he needs right now. They call that offensive line the TVA, the Tennessee Valley Authority. Fourth and two, and Tennessee's going for it from the 33-yard line. Will bypass a field goal attempt of 50 yards. Cole is the lone setback on fourth and two. Quickly to Moore. Forward progress gets him the first down at the 29-yard line.
They're going to dink, they're going to dunk, they're going to hit the short stuff, they're going to set up the long ones for later. But right now, you're using some outstanding receivers. These guys are loose, too. I was down on the field. Pickens was laughing. He was telling, hey, we're going to pick these guys apart today, and they are. Three-step drop. That makes it impossible to get to the quarterback. Puts pressure on the secondary, and they pick up the first to Moore. From the 29, out of the eye, Thompson is the tailback. Another quick one. But this one way over the head of Pickens. Todd Light and Greg Davis over there. Looking at the dean of the SEC coaches, Johnny Majors, in his 14th season at Tennessee. His team has it second and 10 from the Notre Dame 29. end in the game. They stay with Vince Moore as the third receiver. Low pass. Pickens makes the catch at the 24. It'll be third and about five as we set up the Notre Dame defense for you. Eric Jones starts in place of Zorich. However, we expect we may see Zorich later. Boo Williams and Bob Dahl on the, uh, the uh, Notre Dame defensive line. How about the linebackers, Tim? Linebackers have been good. Stonebreaker, of course, is the leading tackler. He's got two interceptions to Bosa. Then you've got Jones and Kawakowski outside, very active on the corners. Third down and five. Thompson and he is stuffed back at the 29 by Boo Williams. That was the first rush of the game for Tennessee and they lose about five. That's exactly right. They've thrown eight passes. That's the first run. And for the first time we see Williams come across and goes against the All-American Antone Davis and Davis was slapping his thighs. He was very upset that he let Williams get that outside rush on him. Greg Burke, number 27, is the place kicker for Tennessee. He's got the wind with him. This is a 46-yard attempt. Jason Julian on the hold. He just drills it. Tennessee nets a field goal on its first possession. There's no dominant team this year in college football. That's been proven. Four number ones have taking it on the chin and dropped out. Second chance, perhaps the last chance for Notre Dame. The Rocket is standing at the 10-yard line. Chapman picked it short the first time, and he does once more away from the Rocket to Dorsey Levens again. Levens to the 31-yard line. A game of keep away from the Rocket. And let's right now take it to John Dockery. You know, Jim, if you look behind me on the bench, that's Chris Zorich trying to contain himself. I talked to the doctor before the game. He said Zorich could play, and that time was not a factor. In other words, if he played today, it wouldn't make any difference if he played three weeks from now. The risk would not go up of him hurting himself. He has almost full strength in the leg, and I expect we might see him today talking to the doctor and talking to the coaches earlier. No question in my mind. Brooks to the 35-yard line. You saw Zorich just shaking. It looks like he's about ready to run out on the field, regardless of who has the football. I thought it was interesting this week. <laughs> Lou Holtz said it on Tuesday he didn't even think that he'd be able to make the trip. On Wednesday, he said he'll make the trip, but he won't dress. Yesterday, he said, hey, he's going to dress, but the only way he'll get on that field is if he runs by me and I miss the tackle. Mm -hmm. Guarantee you he'll play today. When they need to be juiced emotionally and mentally, that's when he'll come in the ball game. Second down and six. Culver, his first carry, and about three yards shy of the first. Rodney Culver is the leading rusher for Notre Dame. 580 yards on the season. Jim, you know, Notre Dame knows it has to match the strength of Tennessee's defensive front with strength of its own. But more importantly, when you play a defense as fast as the ball, you angle block the other way of the pursuit. It's an easier block to make against the speed, and you attack the middle. Third and three, Culver's the fullback, Brooks the tailback. They go to Brooks. Brooks is near the first down yardage at the 41. Hit first by Mark Moore. Okay, so they're using those angle blocks. The other thing that has to happen today is the Rocket has to touch the ball 20 to 25 times. So they've got to get the ball to Rocket Ismail as much as they possibly can. Here you are from the tailback spot. 
can see the angle blocks moving to the left, and then he tries to get right back in off tackle. And that was a first down carry. Picked up the first for him. William Pollard's in as a receiver for the Irish. They take the Brooks. They're looking long. Culver out of the backfield at the 30. Rodney Culver breaks the tackle and finds the end zone. What a run. Tim, then they go 59 yards to Rodney Culver. Did they ever? Six runs, one pass, and the pass goes 59 yards with the score. You're right. Hendrick nails the extra point. 7-3 Irish, mid first quarter. Bang, bang, bang. They run the football. Then they come back with the exact same play, but fake it. No pressure at all on Meyer as he looks into the right flat. Now, everybody's already gone to the strength of formation. They're following Ismail over to the left side. Here comes Culver to the right side, and you can see there's not a player within 10 yards of it. That's it. Gets away from Mark Fletcher. 7-3. Indeed. Neyland Stadium in Knoxville, right off the banks of the Tennessee River, and the sunshine is attempting to break through these thick clouds. Some 95,000 been waiting for the Irish to return. They last played here 11 years ago today. Notre Dame in Tennessee. Look at the sun just coming out right on cue. That touchdown pass by Rick Meyer was the longest pass of his career for Notre Dame, 59 yards. Hendrick kicks short. A fair catch was called at the 25-yard line by Dwayne Dotson. Taking no chances. Could it be interesting, Jim, to see what Tennessee does offensively now. They came out in the first eight plays. You see the penalty against the Irish. First eight plays in the first possession for Tennessee were seven passes, one run. Johnny Majors came into this game very concerned about his tailback position, and he should be. Reggie Cobb, of course, left. Chuck Webb took over, suffered a season-ending injury. McCroskey got hurt. Then last week they had another. On the injury. kickoff, offside kicking team. They only Five have Tony Thompson minutes. left, really. Free kick, free kick. They go through tailbacks as fast as the New York Yankees go through managers. <laughs> well, you're about right. Now they've got to move their fullback over there, and probably see Amsler back there at tailback a little bit today. This is what we talked about. Reggie Cobb, he leaves. Chuck Webb took over, suffered a season-ending injury. McCroskey re-injured his ankle and hamstring last week against Temple. Tavio Henson is also hurt in that game. Tony Thompson continues to carry the load. Tracy Smith is a converted defensive back, and he's been banged up. So they are really thin in that tailback slot, and that's why we came out and we saw seven passes, one run in the first possession from Tennessee. Offsides against the kicking team. They'll retee it from the 30. Notre Dame may be kicking away from Dale Carter. He's run one back this year for a touchdown. Another short kick. Dotson has it at the 36. No fair catch this time. Stays low and gets to the 43-yard line. The Rocket was in on the tackle, by the way. Andy Kelly grew up close to here, had dreams as a youngster of playing in a game like this. Well, when I was little, I always thought of Tennessee out in the street when I was throwing football and stuff. But, uh, yeah, you hear of Notre Dame, Notre Dame all the time. And, uh, and it's just, I think it is something a little bit special when you get a chance to play, uh, especially with, when they're ranked number one. Jeff Burris is in as a cornerback. Here's the option pitch to Thompson. Thompson in the Notre Dame territory. Todd Light makes the hit on him. Vince Moore helped throw the block, but a 12-yard run for Tennessee. <laughs> Look at the battle going in the Big Ten right now. But again, Lou Holtz now on the second defensive series for the Irish has inserted the former freshman tailback, Jeff Burris, number nine. He's down at the bottom of your screen, facing Carl Pickens on this play. Yeah. 
Boy, I don't know where that was headed. Vince Moore was going across the middle. Vince Moore seeing some considerable action here early. The senior from Memphis, Tennessee, where next week the Volunteers will be taking on Ole Miss from the Liberty Bowl. They like to use Moore in a lot of the gimmick plays. You'll see him in reverses. He's carried the ball six times this year on trick plays. Tight end Adams is in there on second and ten. The play action. The pass to the wide open man. Harper at the 25. Harper going for the corner. And out of bounds near the 10. Three yards for Tennessee. They'll spot it at the 12. A lot of teams have had success passing in the middle with crossing patterns against the Irish. Running the safety out and throwing under. That's what they did this time with Harper. Look at him now. The crowd wanted a roughing penalty called on light for this throw down here. And he could have very well gotten one. There is no flag, but they could have gotten one against light. Should have been one. Three receivers in the game on first down. Option pitch. Thompson juking and losing yardage to the 14. Devon McDonald had him tracked down. Watch these outside guys here now. These are the contained guys in any defense. Watch them come across. Here comes the option. They just keep that outside free, skate with the play. Use the sideline, wait for pursuit to come back inside and close it down. Well played by McDonald on the outside. Greg Amsler is the lone back, second and 12. Here he is, Amsler. Back to the original line of scrimmage, setting up third and 10. Bob Dahl on the tackle. Kelly's now six for nine, 47 yards. Amsler moves to that tailback spot, Jim. We mentioned that they're a little bit thin back there, so they move a pullback. He's a very versatile guy. He's been working at tailback all week, 117 yards rushing. From Chatham, New Jersey, it's now third and ten for Tennessee. Backpedaling, firing, complete, short of the first. Alvin Harper. Fourth and a long two for Tennessee. From just inside of the five. Got to think they'll be kicking it. And at last they bring on the field goal unit. Well, the reason they waited is because Johnny Majors wanted to see how far it really was to those first down markers. They said fourth and three. If it was any closer than that, he might have gone. But fourth and three is a long way to go. Take the points, put them up on the board now. Burke has already booted a 46-yarder here in the first. This will be 22 yards. Craig Martin snaps it to Jason Julian. Two for two. And the balls are within one. Seven-six Irish here in the first talk to the Tennessee players about having 97,000 fans supporting them today. Um, I expect they're going to walk into uh, 90,000 hostile fans, uh, possibly 98,000. Who knows? I think we'll have a, probably a record crowd there this week. A lot of people, a lot of students are going to be there. Everybody I know is going to be there. So it should be, hopefully, we'll have the crowd, and I, I know they're going to be into it. So it should be awesome. I don't know. I don't know if they're um, used to anything like the Big Orange fans. Um, It'll, it'll be interesting to see. We're going to have more fans than you know, them coming here, and, we, and they're in our hometown, so they have, a lot of, they have a little surprise coming for them when they walk through the tunnel. You know, the Rockets bouncing around. They kicked away from them twice. By the way, it's now official. The second largest crowd in Tennessee history, 97,100. Here he comes, the Rocket from the nine. to the 29 and it's update time America as we return you to New York take it going for its seventh straight win and up in the fourth by two touchdowns first down Notre Dame the rocket out of the backfield and a gain of two 
You mentioned Penn State going after that seventh straight win. That's 30 in a row over Maryland if they hold off and win that. Maryland tied them last year, but Maryland hadn't beaten Penn State since the 60s when Dick Shiner was the quarterback. What was your record there at Maryland against the, oh, and the Lions? Whoops. He brought out the red sweater today. Freshmen weren't eligible. It would have been 0-4. <laughs> We'll give the Rocket a yard on that carry. Second and nine. He stays in the backfield. Gets another rush. To the short side, he'll lose yardage. Sean Walker and Jeremy Lincoln knock him out of bounds. Lincoln is 5'11", 181 pounds. Rated the defensive, number one defensive player coming out of high school three years ago. He was recruited heavily by Notre Dame, one of the few Tennessee players that was recruited by Notre Dame. Not big, but he's fast, he's intelligent, he can read extremely well. No false step, came up that time and stuck Rocket. No one in the backfield. Five receivers for Notre Dame on third down and nine. Derek Brown stops short of the first. Perry Bailey high-fiving it to the sidelines. He should high-five it. A little new wrinkle by Notre Dame. No backs in the backfield. New wrinkle by Tennessee. They take Bailey, the defensive tackle. He comes back and plays in the linebacker spot and makes the tackle. Dangerous return man. Carter waits for Hendrick. See the bandage on his left hand? Ligament damage in his thumb. He's had some trouble holding on to the snaps during practice. The punt hits at the 35 and is down there by Tom Carter. And let's go down to our man, John Dockery. You know, Jim, we've been talking about the hostile environment. And remember two years ago when uh, Notre Dame lost in the Orange Bowl? I think it was environment that helped to lose that game. Well, here, the feeling is the stands go straight up it's almost a feeling of being engulfed, like being in the bottom of a well for the Irish players and kind of looking out. That's the feeling, an oppressive feeling for the Irish here at Neyland Stadium. Back to you. First down, Tennessee from its 35. Two possessions, two field goals thus far. Wide open, Harper. And a gain of about three yards is all. Dubose on the tackle. The Notre Dame secondary at the moment includes number nine, Jeff Burris. We mentioned he was in on that last series. He's a freshman from Rock Hill, South Carolina, and he's been a tailback until Monday. Monday, he was returned. And there's Zorich, his first appearance of the afternoon. He's got that dislocated kneecap. Second down, seven. Look out. Incomplete at balls as Stonebreaker collides right away with Thompson. Zorro couldn't wait on the bench any longer. You know what those Notre Dame coaches say, pain is temporary, victory's forever. Watch this play. Stonebreaker reads it right away, comes, no false steps, bang, sees the back out of the backfield and nails him, breaks it up. Next time Thompson comes now, he's going to have his head on the swivel looking for number 42 in white, Stonebreaker. <laughs> Willie Clark is in there now as a safety for Notre Dame. He's another converted running back as of Monday. Third and seven. Across the middle, picking. Cutting back. Lost yardage on the cutback, but still gets the first down at the 47 of Tennessee. you to watch number 15 Pickens bring it across the middle. We told you the middle has been open. Stanford used it all day. They run the safety out and come over the linebacker and underneath the safety and Pickens is one of the best in the country. Only a sophomore. He'll be a first round pick. I guarantee it. Last year he played secondary. Came up with four interceptions. Led the secondary. He also was the wide receiver. Punt returner. Kick returner. He was the Rocket of Tennessee. First down run by Pole straight ahead into Notre Dame territory at the 48. Pickens was the defensive MVP of the Cotton Bowl. Last four games, he picks off four passes in that secondary. Now what happens is they get Carter out of a junior college. Carter comes in and plays that same spot for Tennessee. So now Pickens can just concentrate on offense. And they say instead of relying on his speed, his natural talent, he's honing in on the little technical things, and he's improved as a wide receiver. 
To the near side is Pickens on second and six. They fake to Thompson. Zorich chasing after Kelly, who just spikes it incomplete. He better be careful. He'll get intentionally grounded. Good thing Moore was there. Watch Zorich. Zorich moves to the outside, number 50 here in white. He's obviously slowed. He's not the same Zorich that you're going to see normally because it's banged up. And here they roll up. He's got that dislocated kneecap. That's now 15 passes and only five runs for Tennessee. I'll tell you what about Zorich, though. When he's healthy, he's the whole package. There's not a better nose guard in the entire country. Speedster Anthony Morgan to the far side on third and six. Kelly sidearms it incomplete, intended for Pickens. Rod Smith was right with him. Look at number 50 right there in the middle of the screen. Did you see him? That's Zorch. He's starting to limp a little bit. He's starting to feel that knee. The adrenaline's starting to wear down now that he's been in some action and had some contact. And it's starting to bother him a little bit. Here he is again. Watch him. Makes contact. Now, if he gets outside, he can do some damage there to Kelly, but he couldn't get out quick enough. Here's the punt by Joey Chapman. Rocket lets it bounce into the end zone, a touchback. Bring it all header action coming your way tomorrow on CBS. That's my upset pick of the week, the Rams over the Giants. I think the Giants are ready. Ricky Waters is ready. He has the first down yardage out to the 32-yard line. They'll bring it back, though. There's a flag, and I think it's holding against Notre Dame. We'll wait and see. Interesting choices Lou Holtz has at tailback. He has started three different players this year. Waters, Brooks, and Dorsey Levins at that position. And then, of course, he can bring the Rocket over and play that spot as well. Johnny Majors was funny talking about that the other day. Majors says they've got all these parade All-Americans, guys that they just selected Notre Dame. You don't recruit there, you select. Holding, offensive line, 10-yard penalty. Majors says, here we are at Tennessee. We're so thin to tailback, we're playing defensive players, and we're running out of them. <laughs> Holtz's team is backed up to the 11-yard line. First and 19. Ricky Waters with a big hole out across the 30 to the 34-yard line. That's a first down for Notre Dame on a 23-yard run. He's a co-captain on offense with Mike Help. And Mike Help helped his fellow captain on this play with a block straight ahead. Look at the center. See Help? He just used that angle block. They trap a little bit. They bring him up the middle. One thing about Notre Dame, they'll finesse you. They'll use a lot of different formations to hide the same basic, simple plays, but they execute extremely well. First and 10, Rodney Culver. Another hole. He lands right on the UT mark, the 50-yard line, after a 15-yard game. have not had great success against Tennessee defensively. This defense is highly ranked. We told you the pass defense number one in the nation. They only allow about 13 points a game. Right now, Notre Dame's moving on them rather methodically. It's the final minute of the first quarter, 7-6 Notre Dame. First down, Tony Brooks. Hit by Dale Carter and Floyd Miley. But into Tennessee territory at the 43. Well, the reason for that statistic is obvious. Tennessee's been throwing the ball. But Notre Dame is running well on this drive. A couple of big breakers right up the middle. Second down and two and three receivers in the game for Notre Dame. No tight end. Brooks collared at the line of scrimmage. Hit by Chris Mims. And time expires in the first quarter. With the score, Notre Dame 7 
and Tennessee six will return to Neyland Stadium after this message and a word. Well, that's the first blue sky we've seen in Knoxville in a couple of days. The rain was coming down so hard, just a deluge. In fact, the uh, Tennessee officials were deluged with ticket requests. They could have filled this thing a couple of times over. They came up now just 250 spectators shy of the all-time record, but it's over 97,000. Third and one. Flags are down as the balls advance right to the 40, which should get the necessary yardage. It's going to be interesting to see what this call is. A lot of times on short yardage, you'll either get somebody move early or you get somebody lining up in the neutral zone. They go nose to nose in short yardage. At the half, Kentucky 21, Vanderbilt 14. Movement on the right side of that offensive line for Notre Dame. Going to call it on Marco Yorkovich. Movement offensive line, five yard penalty. West Virginia 21, Rutgers 3. Third quarter, Tony Brooks had the necessary yardage, but of course that's wiped out, so now it's third and six. Not thrown to the rocket to this point. He's getting a lot of attention, though. That's one of the reasons. This is the most dangerous formation, though, for Rocket when he's the second receiver in. He's got more field to work with. Tight end, Derek Brown set out as a receiver to the far side. Third and six. Here comes the rush. Fumble. The ball is free. Chuck Smith hit Rick Meyer. I saw one indication that it was an incomplete pass. And it came from the referee who's standing right behind Meyer. Incomplete. That man in the white hat's the referee, and his position is eight yards behind the line of scrimmage, so he doesn't get in the way of the offense. Watch him now. He'll be right behind Meyer. He's got a great point of view. Now, here comes the pressure on the outside, and then it comes from behind by the linebackers. First... His arm is coming forward, no way. It looked like it was hit from behind before it started to come forward. I agree. It was recovered anyway by Tony Brooks. That looked like a fumble. <laughs> Hendrick. Punt bouncing inside the 20. Look at Todd Lightfield, that one inside the five. Heads up play by Todd Light. And Tennessee will have to start from the three yard line. Let's go down to John Dockery. You know, Jim, if you look for Darren Pritchett's name in the uh, program, you won't find a walk-on non-scholarship freshman. But this week, he's the most popular man around because you were the Rocket Simulator, weren't you? What was it like? It was kind of exciting because uh, all the attention is drawn on you, and uh, I had to work hard to, uh, you know, the players expected a lot out of me to give them a look. And I know you took some extra hits, and you were the center of attention. Okay, Jim Nance, back to you. Tony Thompson on the first down carry for maybe a yard is all. Well, I tell you, Notre Dame got a heck of a break here because now it's Tennessee backed up. And when you look, there's no way that ball is not a fumble. His arm was coming forward. It should have been a fumble back there. They call an incomplete pass. They get a good punt, light downs it, and now it's Tennessee backed up. Instead of being in Notre Dame territory up near midfield, now it's Tennessee backed up inside the five. Lou Holtz has returned to his original starters in the secondary. Second and nine out of the end zone. Out of the end zone looking for Harper. Almost an acrobatic catch near midfield. Todd Light on the coverage. Don't be surprised when that man leaps into the air. Alvin Harper, former SEC high jumping champion. You're playing tailback. This is what Kelly sees. He sees the linebackers drop, and he sees Harper outside, number 81. Now, Harper is best at separating himself from the defenders. He's a seam seeker, track guy, 7 2 and a quarter high jumper. This time, he tries to out jump the secondary and almost had it. Second week in a row, we've seen a high jumper playing wide receiver. Was it? Week it was Herman Moore. Oh, wasn't he something? On third and nine, they run it to the 10 yard line, and we'll have to punt. Tony Thompson. Advances it about six yards. Andre Jones on the hit. Freshman Joey Chapman from the middle of the end zone. Craig Martin snaps it to him.
It's a low one. Coming to the rocket at his own 47. Bouncing around. He's free. The rocket is free at the 20. And inside of the 15 at the 12. There is, however, a flag down back at the 44-yard line. And it's going to be against Notre Dame for blocking in the back. You know, there's three ways to kick to that guy right there. You kick away from him, which they've done early. You kick a blooper high and let your coverage team run under it. Or you can squib it and disrupt the timing of the return team. Now, Tennessee tried all three of those last week against Temple. The squib didn't work so well, but they did kick bloopers very well. But this time, because they're backed up, they had to kick it right to Rocket. And there's the block in the back on number 33 into the Tennessee number 33 player. That's a good call. Lou Holtz didn't like it, but it was an illegal block. Notre Dame will start from its own 42-yard line. It's 7-6, number one Notre Dame leading by one. The touchdown, a 59-yard pass from Rick Meyer to Rodney Culver, and two field goals by Burke of Tennessee. Most surprising thing there, Jim, is look at Ismail, 26 all-purpose yards. He has one yard rushing, zero catches. I thought the only way they wouldn't get the ball to Rocket today is if the defense intercepted the snap. Look at the fake by Meyer. Ball is caught by Tony Smith. It's update time. Let's check in back at the how did you like that fake by Rick Meyer on the last play? I liked it. It was a should have been a completed pass. It was right there. All he had to do was look it in. The defender just took his eyes off of it for a second. Disrupted the receiver. Second and ten. Ricky Waters in the free to the 40 of Tennessee. A 19-yard run. And they are getting some wide gaps right up the middle. Watch the block by Sandry. Sandry's number 53. Second man in, left of the screen. Right here. This is Sandry. Watch the block he throws now. They'll angle block, they'll drive people out, and here it comes. Boom. Waters right up the middle. Same thing they've been running. Angle block under the pursuit. Tony Brooks. And a gain of about two. Ernest Fields on the tackle. Fooled you, didn't I? Drew that, you looked and you said, wait a minute, Sandra didn't throw a block. Then he goes downfield, cuts off two guys down there. Oh, no he initial, did on the no initial contact. He goes down and cut them off because the play was coming. Notre Dame was possessing him. Sandry starting today for the injured Justin Hall out with a back injury. Second down play. The option in traffic. And Meyer smartly just falls to the turf. Sean Walker was in the area. It'll be third and about eight from the Tennessee 38. Todd Kelly and Casey Rogers. Is Meyer limping a little bit there? He sure is. Of course, they've gotten to him several times now. Hardy really had a big shot on him earlier. Lou Holtz is about as emotional as I've seen him. Last night we had a long chat with him. He was very loose, relaxed, but he is emotional now and very much into this game. Third will call it nine. The Rocket is the middle man in the formation to the right. Rodney Culver breaks the tackle. Culver leaning for the first and maybe about a yard short. Ernest Fields again on the hit. It will be about fourth and one. Notre Dame's going to go for it. This is almost a middle screen. You know where Notre Dame got this play? They got it from the University of Miami. They aren't playing Miami anymore. They aren't on the schedule. They like this play. They called. They talked. They saw how it's set up. And now they're running the screen, the middle screen that Miami had. Fourth and about two. A very short two. Brooks just across the 30-yard line. And that's about the first down yardage. They may have to measure. Nope, 
They're going to go ahead and peek across the sideline. It's a first down for Notre Dame. This is where the Irish are most dangerous. Now they're in the red zone. They're inside the 30. They can go for the score every time, but it's very methodical by Lou Holtz. He will set it up. He won't go for the touchdown immediately. Pollard to the near side, the rocket to the far side on first down. Tony Brooks up the middle, inside of the 20, bulldozing his way to the 13-yard line. Tony Brooks on the game. Stop by Fletcher. in that red zone, Jim, against the Irish, you know it's the four down area. And they're most dangerous because now you've got to respect the wide outs, you've got to respect the running backs, and you've got to respect everything which makes you soft in some areas. First down, Culver and Waters in the backfield. Culver inside, a gain of a yard. Hit by Bailey. Oh, headphones on down then he'll take those off and put the defensive headphones on his nose is running he's got his heavy jacket on he's walking the sidelines he's really into this game mentally he's calling things offensively and defensively today more active than I've seen him in a long time Virginia bounces back with a win today but how about Georgia Tech tied in the fourth with Virginia Tech three three Andrea Mike will update you at halftime the rocket on the run to the 10 yard line Sets up third and about Stop seven. This is only Rocket's third carry. He's got a total of two yards. Look at him here. They all pinch. They close down. There's Daryl Hardy, number 87, 214 pounder, taking on Rocket, who's only 170 pounds. Hardy does a great job of pinching from the outside in. down and eight. Hardy again on the tackle. He hits Brooks at the eight-yard line. And it's field goal time for Notre Dame. Boy, there's Hardy, 6'3", 214 pounds, right in your screen, number 87. Look at him now. He's got that tail low, so he's staying at home. He breaks down, then immediately commits himself to the ball carry and makes the stick. Straight away attempt for Craig Hendrick. 26 yards. Jim Sexton on the hole. Count it. 10-6 Notre Dame. Midway point of the second quarter. 10-6 Irish. Scott Kowalkowski has played in more games than any player on the Notre Dame roster. He was part of the championship team two years ago, and as a senior, he wants one more ring. It's our year, uh, you know, our last year, and uh, we have an opportunity now. Uh, we've been put back in, in, the, in the number one spot here. We have an opportunity to do something with it. And, uh, I, you know, I think he, he senses that, you know, that we don't want to let it slip through our fingers again. Like, uh, you know, earlier in the year, you know, we've, uh, we've had the opportunity to get back. And, you know, I think uh, the, the senior defense, senior players on the defense especially, have felt uh, a great obligation to one another and to our teammates as well to get this thing back in the right direction. Lou Holt certainly Andrew, challenged him. Beat, said it's your season, second chance to be Andrew, number one. He also Andrew. showed the team an article from a Tennessee newspaper this week that called Notre Dame a holy school with a holy defense. A lot of holes in it. And Notre Dame doesn't like that. Deep kick. Carter from the goal line. Watch him run. Flag is down as Carter runs it back 39 yards. But it'll be coming back. I hope Jerome Bettis, number six, for Notre Dame as a law student, because he just pleaded his case to the official and he won. He jumped right up and said, hey, I was clipped, the flag flew, and here comes Notre Dame, just move him right back. The young man we just heard from, Scott Kowalkowski from Farmington Hills, Michigan. 
His father, Bob, played with the Detroit Lions for 11 years. Talk about second chances. Notre Dame lost to Stanford on October the 6th and was back on top in the ratings four weeks later. Thompson hit by Stonebreaker at the 14-yard line. You know, Zorich almost looked healthy on that play. They doubled him up. He went down, did a little roll spin, and Thompson actually had to jump right over top of him. Watch number 50 right here. That's, that's Zorich. Watch. He's double team, rolls out of it. Watch. Gets to the ground there. Here comes Thompson, and Thompson jumps over him. Boom. He's out of his rhythm right now and lets Stonebreaker Phil make the tackle. Second and seven. Faking option and going long. Carl Pickens the target and almost intercepted by Rod Smith. Pickens did a great job as a defensive back. Now watch this. Pickens in the orange right here. Number 15, he's the receiver. But watch, now he's a defensive back because he knows he's shielded out by the body of Smith. Goes over his shoulder and knocks it down. That is a terrific play. Here it is again. He knows he's, he's lost his leverage. He knows now the white jerseys have the advantage. So he becomes the defensive back and knocks it away. Pick and save the pick that time. When he had the Cotton Bowl, he had five interceptions in the last five games last year. Pickens, but now playing exclusively on offense. Third and seven. Inside again, they pitch it to Moore. Devon McDonald finally makes the hit at the 17-yard line. The shuffle pass gains about four yards to the 17. And again, Tennessee will punt from deep in its own territory. Lou Holtz told us again last night, we mentioned it earlier, I guarantee you our defense is going to play well tomorrow. And they have to this point. Two field goals for the Volunteers. Six minutes to go before the half. Chapman, fair catch by the Rocket. He lets it go. And they'll spot it at the Notre Dame 40. A 48-yard punt for Joey Chapman. Casey Rogers down the ball. A touchdown pass to Rodney Culver. A Craig Hendrick field goal. And the number one team in the nation leads it 10-6. Our troops may be in the Persian Gulf, but none of the 95,000 people here at Neyland Stadium, nor has college football forgotten those troops over there. That yellow ribbon on the goalpost, a reminder. Also, interesting, many of the colleges across the country are sending videotapes over to the Persian Gulf so the uh, troops don't miss these fine college football games. Back to you guys, Tim. All right, John Dockery on the sidelines. Jim Nance and Tim Brand in the booth. First down for the Irish. Running it with Ricky Waters. And a gain of about four. Fields on the tackle. You know, Jim, the Rocket is not in this ball game. This is a rare mistake by Rocket right here. He's at midfield. One of the four don'ts of the kicking game. Never let the ball hit the ground. He loses at least 10 yards by letting it hit. Don't be off sides. Don't rough the kicker. Don't let the ball hit the ground and don't clip. He's not in this ball game. He's only run the ball three times for one yard and hadn't caught a pass yet. That's a rare mistake by the Rocket. He's in a slot to the left on second and seven. Meyer going to Waters, bouncing around, and almost intercepted. Off the shoulder of Waters, and Dale Carter had a shot at it. Are you ready for another upset, folks? The win that is for John Cooper. You see, last second victory. That throws a bit of a dagger at the Rose Bowl. Third down play, and Meyer will lose yardage. Chuck Smith and Chris Mims. Also in the Big Ten today, Michigan over Illinois. Turn. He stands at his 20. He's about ready to explode, too. Carter has a punt return. He says Notre Dame has the rocket. I'm the bullet. Spotted at the 28, a 32-yard punt. 
in a way it's been a very bizarre Tennessee season they had a fourth quarter explosion to tie Colorado or Tennessee to tie Colorado and then they tied Auburn as Auburn stormed back blew out Florida 45 to 3 here when Florida was ranked ninth and then lost the next week in a battle of field goals to Alabama so this is the fourth top 10 team that Tennessee has played this year Kelly sideline to Poles short gain at the 32 yard line Johnny Major says the volunteers are just six points away from being number one and he's about, about right on that but he also laughs and he says boy I didn't learn well from General Nealon he says Nealon always believed in a soft schedule if he came back he'd say hey Johnny you didn't learn very well buddy you loaded up with those big teams <laughs> got the top two finishers from the 1956 Heisman race in the building today I'll tell you about that in a minute second down and seven Thompson runs into Bob Boo Williams and Demetrius Dubos look at George Williams top of the screen number 69 look at him work uses a bull rush and then sneaks by and makes the tackle boy once he gets back there there's no contest Thompson's only 181 Williams is 298 pounds and he's like a dancing bear back there he's got those quick feet Third and ten. Incomplete. Andre Jones now called for interference. He had a collision with Alvin Harper when the ball arrived. They'll say it was early. Lou Holtz doesn't agree with the call. We'll take another look. Top of the screen. You want to watch number seven. Here he comes. Now the linebacker moves up. There's no question it's interference. Gets there before the ball. Andre Jones is a good one. He's from Hyattsville, Maryland. Very intelligent individual. Speaks four languages. Spanish, English, Russian, Japanese. He is an outstanding outside guy. Just mistimed that pass. It was pass interference. First down, Tennessee. Tony Thompson. First down at the 49-yard line. Tackled by Todd Light. Watch these two guys right here. That's McCray and Miss Linsky. 50s Miss Linsky gets a good block. Look at McCray. Just rides the defender out. And then Thompson comes up underneath of him. Miss Linsky's 281. McCray's 291. Both are outstanding offensive linemen. Here he comes again. Thompson this time only for a yard as Eric Jones trips him. Balls right at the 50 with just under three minutes to go in the second quarter. Notre Dame leads Tennessee 10 to 6. That'll show you how the game plans were set up. Notre Dame wants to run. Tennessee pass. Second down and nine on the option. Tony Thompson near the first down at the 41-yard line. Greg Davis and Devon McDonald combine on the tackle. Going to call for a measurement. So we were talking about that 1956 Heisman finish. Paul Horning of Notre Dame won it, although the Irish that year were two and eight. Horning won it, and Johnny Majors of Tennessee was second. See the first down. Hey, it's no surprise that a Notre Dame guy wins the Heisman. They've won seven of them. Those guys use them as paperweights in South Bend. How about the All-America backfield in 56? It's impressive, isn't it? I'm telling you. Johnny Majors in Tennessee that year, 10 and 0. Now the question, Jim, which one has the best golf game out of all those guys? John Brody. Majors isn't far off. Brody's, of course, playing competitively. Flags down. We'll stop play. Five-yard penalty. Final scores of Metro 
Two minutes, 30 seconds remaining in the second quarter. Tennessee trying to drive and take the lead. 10-6 Irish. First and 15 for the Volunteers. Over the head of Vince Moore. That was a pass really right between two Tennessee players who were spread out. And you know what? Moore is upset and Holtz is upset. Moore is upset because he was overthrown and he knows he was open. Holtz is upset because somehow the defense got a little out of sync there and there was a hole there. There was nobody within 10 yards of Vince Moore. Well, that often discussed secondary for Notre Dame. They're staying with Todd Light and Rod Smith on the corners, George Foreman and Greg Davis, the safeties. Second and 15. And dropping it, Carl Pickens at the 30. You don't see this very often. Pickens is about as good as you can come. 26 receptions. He's the leading receiver, but he fights this one. Look, doesn't look it in. He didn't let his hands become soft on that. This is a great receiving tradition here at Tennessee. Wide receivers, many still in the NFL. Galt, Tim McGee, Anthony Miller. Hancock, Stanley Morgan, just the list goes on. Five receivers from Tennessee drafted in the first round during the 80s. Third and 15. Great protection, but here comes the flag. Eric Jones helped take Kelly out of bounds, but a flag back at the 50-yard line. That's done. Hold it. Called a face mask on the offense. I think he means it's holding. He points in that direction. Face mask, Tennessee. Face mask, 15 yard penalty offensive team. Penalty is declined. Be fourth down. Notre Dame declining the penalty. Allowing now Tennessee a shot at pinning him inside the 20. They bypass a third and 30 situation. Had they taken the penalty? Chapman's punt going for the corner. No, won't make it. Touchback. Bring it out to the 20. Knock off mighty New York. Ricky Waters. Back to the line of scrimmage, maybe a loss of a yard. Daryl Hardy on the tackle, and Georgia Tech gets a late field goal to win that game. Scott Sisson delivered the difference last week, and he must have done it again today. So Georgia Tech stays unbeaten. Meanwhile, here, 138 remaining in the half, and a reminder that Notre Dame, Jim, still has all three of its timeouts. Letting the clock run. Second and 11, leading 10-6. Tony Brooks to the 21-yard line. And a penalty against Notre Dame. Too much time, first indication that the noise is affecting Meyer. Dead ball before the snap. Time expired. Offensive team, five-yard penalty. How about how Notre Dame tried to combat that this week? Yeah, Lou Holtz piped in. First of all, they played indoors all week. That was the first thing. And they piped in a lot of crowd noise where they could barely hear. And then over top of the crowd noise, they had the song Rocky Top, which they play down here. Lou Holtz laughed. He says, you know, my only concern is some of these players will come back in a few years and say, hey, I've got a hearing problem. It's because I had the stuff piped up so loud. Three receivers to the left on second and 16, and a loss. And now Tennessee has to start using the clock. There they go. Clock's still rolling. Nobody's seen Coach Majors yet. Now they stop it. 
Nine seconds went off that clock from the time Johnny Major started trying to get the attention of his team. Lawson, that play, back to the 11-yard line. Notre Dame will have third and 19 when we come back. Boys, we knock him out. It's out of bounds. It's out of bounds. It's pass. Otherwise, get up and stop the clock. Stop the clock. Stop the clock. Wants to make sure that they don't waste any time on this next play. Third and 19. They want to try to stop the clock, get the football back, make Notre Dame punt from deep in its own territory. Rodney Culver. Now they'll follow the coach's orders and call for the timeout immediately with 44 seconds remaining. One timeout left for Tennessee. Should have a crack at it right before the half. One touchdown in the first half. Look here, hey, it's 10 man max, okay? Max is what? It's our block. No, 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 no. I'm talking about if he's inside. Yeah, if he's inside. Okay, go get All right, hey, let's get in there and get this son of a bitch now. Let's go make something happen. Go get it, go get it. Live television translation means, hey, let's really go get them now and try to get some points on the board. Let's go get them, guys. <laughs> it's kind of hard to edit those live mics. Hey, it happens. It's real life. Craig Hendrick standing at his three-yard line. Lance Johnson will snap it to him. 44 seconds before the intermission. down the punt will bounce inside of the 40-yard line down it at the 36 but a heavy rush in on Hendrick Ernest Fields was very close to blocking it team offsides violation of neutral zone five-yard penalty gets the defense they're gonna decline that one yeah, but you know, it was a, a long count. The guys were getting jumpy going after that block. You've got to be disciplined. Kick it again. They're going to kick it again. You know, here again, there's one of those four don'ts I keep talking about. Don't be off sides. Don't rough the kicker. Don't let the ball hit the ground. And don't clip. Got to be disciplined with the kicking game. The climb by Notre Dame. It's first and 10, Tennessee. Penalty is refused. Watch how close. Of course, it wouldn't have mattered with the offside penalty, but watch Fields come in. Tennessee is one of the best at getting pressure right up the gut. Hardy's blocked two kicks already, and they both came up the middle this year. 29 seconds before the intermission, and Tennessee has the football in one timeout. Football at its own 36-yard line. Short one to Mark Adams. That doesn't help him much. Clock is running. Doesn't help you at all. From the 43. Pickens gets out of bounds with five seconds remaining. All right, they're still not in field goal range. You only have four seconds remaining in the half, so now you got to go up top again. Majors really wanted to go a little bit deeper and try to get that side thing to break underneath the uh, the safeties and get down into field goal territory. One thing to look out for, Harper, you see him in the huddle. Harper and Pickens both have high jumping backgrounds. Pickens was a state high school high jumper, one over seven feet. And Harper is a former SEC high jump champ. Short pass won't help him either. Andre Jones on the tackle as the half expires. And the score, number one, Notre Dame, 10. Tennessee number nine, six. Tennessee, six. Right now, let's take you to Andrea Joyce. In our the first half, Tennessee scored on two field goals by Greg Burke. And our John Dockery spoke with Johnny Majors about his team's troubles on offense. Well, uh, Notre Dame's played a very salty defense. Uh, 
I think they made some adjustments. They put a lot of pressure on us. And uh, they dropped one pass down here. It was very critical in the last uh, part of the first half. Uh, another factor is our second uh, second quarter field position was just uh, very bad on our two and back inside about the 15. I uh, hope that we can be more consistent uh, other than a drop pass. It's a tough ball game. Salty defense in the first half for Notre Dame. Salty means tricky. See, they're doing some different things. They move Zorich to the outside a little bit. They mix their secondary coverages. Field position. Remember that controversial Rick Meyer incompletion that should have been called a fumble? Wasn't. Notre Dame held onto the ball, kicked it, and pinned Tennessee deep. So there goes the field position. Tennessee will receive the second half kick. There's the rocket on kickoff coverage. from the three looking for the wedge won't get it good tackle rusty setzer people are waiting for the rocket to explode in the first half three carries for a yard he did not have a pass thrown in his direction and return yards 25 but remember he's done tremendous damage in the fourth quarter this year only four yards total offense separate the two teams in the first half. They used different means. Notre Dame ran it. Tennessee passed it. <laughs> Kelly quickly to Pickens. And Rod Smith wraps him at the 25. Notre Dame starts in the secondary. Todd Light and Rod Smith at the corners. George Porman and Greg Davis are the safeties. This is what we were talking about. Only four yards separate the two teams in total yards for the first half, but you can see they did it different ways. Notre Dame running the ball. Seven penalties over Notre Dame, only two for Tennessee. Second and six, Pickens again, same route, and it looks like a first down for Tennessee. Zorich is not in on this opening series of the second half. Now they hit Pickens on a couple of quick plays right on the sidelines. I guess they feel Smith has been backing off of them too much. Well, they could be setting something up, too, to send Pickens deep. Kelly now 17 for 28, so he's hitting his passes. Fakes it again. Now lofts it high for Pickens. There was contact, and there's the flag. Rod Smith saying, wait, what did I do? Jim, that's what I was talking about, setting something up. Picking short, boom. Picking short, boom. Then pump that thing. Let the set and go. Interference. 15 yards, automatic first down. Take a look at it again. Both of them are going for the football. Could have been inc incidental contact. The official that side, the back judge, didn't see it. I mean, he didn't see it that way. What he did see was the pass interference call. That's the eighth penalty of the game against Notre Dame. I think as long as you're going for the football like Smith was, you shouldn't throw that flag. Another flag on the field as Tony Thompson is grabbed at the ankles by Kowalkowski. White team violation, neutral zone, offsides, white team, first down, five yards ago. Look at Lou Holtz. He can't believe it. I mean, these guys are airing the laundry today. They're throwing the flags. The whole second quarter was a lot of flags. We mentioned that Tennessee had only two penalties. Notre Dame had seven. We've already seen two in this half. It gives the balls a first and five from inside Notre Dame territory. Pickens at the 35. Down at the 15-yard line. is having an exceptional year. He has an unbelievable ability to run to the football. Here he splits the scene. The last three or four weeks, he's been playing offense only, more mentally honed in, doing the little things instead of relying on sheer speed. Fastest receiver, not necessarily the best hands. Rolling poles to the 10. After a 33-yard pass play, No huddle for Tennessee. They've come right back to the line of scrimmage. 
They want to control the tempo. They don't want Notre Dame to set. They talked about those defenses. They don't want them to have an opportunity to change. Pickens at the bottom of the screen. Burris working on him. It's going to be an interesting matchup to watch. Jeff Burris. What they want to do, Jim, is go to the alley-oop. You mentioned that he's a high jumper, 7-1 and a quarter, SEC title. Now you come, put him in the corner, work against the guy, throw the alley-oop and let him go. You see it here, Jeff Burris is 6-1. Pickens is 6-2, but a high jumper. Put it up, alley-oop, let him go. Burris has been practicing since Monday. He's a converted tailback. Third and five. Him up with the run. Thompson has the first down. And the touchdown, Tennessee. play Thompson Burke on the extra point 13 10 Tennessee drives it right out of the locker room at halftime Tennessee comes out firing the pass they put Notre Dame on their heels so you come back with the draw now here comes Thompson he'll take it up inside look at the block he gets from his fullback boy Poles just opened that thing up for him he ought to go shake Poles hands he gave him a terrific block Thompson takes it in he's shaken up but he got the touchdown first and Tennessee leads they used four passes in this drive, so they were expecting to pass. But watch how everybody works to make this touchdown go. Here's Pickens, Carl Pickens. Now roll that thing. Now freeze it right here. He's going to take out the defensive back. Boom. There's your block. Okay, now let's go to the other angle. Watch the fullback in the middle here. You're going to see a block by Poles right here. He's going to take out the linebacker, DuBose. Everybody worked to make this touchdown go. Boom. There's the block. Roll it. DuBose is out of the play. Thompson sees it, cuts off his hip, and he carries it into the end zone. I'll give Burris a lot of credit, though, number nine for Notre Dame. He got blocked, came back, still made a stick on that guy, and Thompson's a little bit shaken up. Another short kick. Ryan Mahalko from the 25 and across the 30. Big Ryan tackled at the 34-yard line and down to John Dockery. Tim Brown, you were just talking about Tony Thompson being shaken up. Well, here he is right on the ground, and what they're checking, Tim, is a pulled groin muscle. Coach came over and said, how are you, Tony? He shook his head, okay, okay. But they're trying to keep it stretched now so he can go back in. You know how thin they are at tailback, so this is critical to Tennessee. Doc, that might mean that Greg Amsler, coming over from fullback, may have to go the rest of the way. First down, Irish. First play of the second half. Culver did not turn around in time. You mentioned Amsler moving over for Tennessee. If that's the case, if Thompson can't return, what happens then, Jim, is Tennessee offensively loses the speed in their running attack. Now, Notre Dame won't have to respect that. They can pinch down and load up on the receivers. The Rockets in a slot to the right. Ray Griggs is the receiver wide to the right. Second and 10. Ricky Waters, great run. And a first down. Look at him go. Ricky Waters to the 30. No one's going to catch him. Touchdown, Notre Dame. Six yards for Ricky Waters. Hendrick hooks it through. 
And the Irish regain the lead at 17-13. This team knows how to handle pressure. It's gone 18 of its last 24 games, ranked number one. First, Mike Held gets a terrific block. Then Waters gets into the secondary, and nobody wraps up. Lincoln missed the tackle. Ernest Fields missed the tackle. And there's no way that Lincoln 25 is going to catch Waters once he's past the secondary. Touchdown, Irish. You just witnessed a great moment for that young man, Ricky Waters, the senior co-captain from Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. He has played a lot of positions in his career for the Irish. Came here as a running back, played some receiver, moved back to tailback, and here in his senior year when he really wanted to star, he kind of got lost in the mix at tailback with Tony Brooks and Dorsey Levins and the Rockets splitting time there as well. At times in his career, he's been accused of not running hard. But today, he galloped 66 yards through the Tennessee secondary. He's over 100 yards on the contest. And Lou Holtz told his seniors before the game, guys, you're going to have to deliver for us today. It's in the seniors' hands, and he has done it, putting the Irish back on top. Dale Carter, antsy to run it out, but he won't. We've got a doubleheader coming your way next Saturday early out of the Southwest Conference, Texas against TCU from Fort Worth. And then later from the Liberty Bowl, they'll meet at Memphis, Tennessee and Mississippi. Major Sugar Bowl implications in that game. Of course, it all starts at 12 Eastern time with Andrea and Mike. College football doubleheader next week. Tony Thompson is still in the game. Football and runs into Mike Stonebreaker after five yards. You've got Zorge, number 50. He's playing hurt. Thompson's playing hurt. Zorge overruns the play a little bit, and they just ride him out of there. Miss Linsky does a nice job on the block. Thompson leading the SEC in rushing. Engineering major. Impressive young lad. Second and five. Greg Amsler picks up the first down across the 30. Amsler scored a touchdown in Tennessee's Cotton Bowl victory January the 1st. It was school victory number 600 to start out the calendar year 1990. All kind of milestones. This the 100th season of football in the Smoky Mountains at Tennessee. On first down to fake, the pass to Amsler. Breaks the tackle and gets the first down to the 43-yard line. He ran over one Notre Dame defender. I believe it was Greg Davis. Watch Mislinski right here going pick up the blitz on the other side on the linebacker clear it out Notre Dame also had Zorich down the bottom of the screen they had moved him back outside for containment and they went away from Zorich three receiver set first down option time and a pitch to Thompson Todd Light drags him out at the Notre Dame 47 near another first down let me tell you something about Tony Thompson. He was the Florida high school weightlifting champ for his size. He's got 4-5 speed, and yet this is a guy that bench presses weights like the linebackers do. He's only 5'7", 180 pounds, but you could see his strength on that last run. First down, Bass is knocked down. Deflected at the line of scrimmage. Boy, number 21 in white right there in the middle of the screen. Now moving to the right. Got away with a pass interference call. There was no flag. Tennessee coaches are still upset. He came up and made contact with Pickens. Ball was in the air. There was no call. Actually held his jersey. Here it is. Now Kelly sees him and tries to throw it. The ball is deflected by DeBose. But right here, Pickens was held coming off the line. Look at him. He's already pointing. He says, hey, Smith interfered with me. No call. Play action. Vince Moore underneath. And a 
Tennessee first down. They tried clearing out Notre Dame. They took Pickens deep and then threw underneath to Vince Moore. A gain of 16. Most successful thing you can do in football is surprise the defense, keep them off balance. They did that that time. You picked up the Pickens went deep and took the free man with him, and then they come back underneath with Moore. But right now, they're working underneath very well. Sack time for the Notre Dame D. Michael Stonebreaker. Stonebreaker. that you call the play you think it's safe quick three-step drop boom throw you can't get pressure on the quarterback that way watch him one two three throw he's covered now you're in trouble and here comes stonebreaker boom thompson couldn't hold him stonebreaker comes free and makes the hit second and long they run it with thompson to the 32 yard line thompson on the game. You know what that's called a coverage sack. It'll go down on the numbers for Stonebreaker, but the secondary should have part of it. You know, that's the third, or actually the sixth time is all. Sixth time all the year that Kelly has been sacked. Now third and 11. Trailing 17-13. Stars. They understand what an assist is. Will the Rocket break one today? From the 20. Boy, it's exciting, I'll tell you that. Out of bounds at the 28-yard line. Dale Carter. Finally bumped him out. He's exciting and he's also frustrated. They are not kicking the ball to him. He almost took it away from his teammate and then he was really trying to make something happen on his own. A penalty on the kick return against Tennessee. Face mask. There it is with the right hand. Incidental. Not flagrant. Incidental. Well, they... They mark it off as a 15-yard flagrant face mask penalty. Well, I don't agree with that. So put the ball at the 44-yard line. Ricky Waters for a gain of two. There was an enormous roar here just a moment ago when they announced this score. Auburn cannot rebound from the loss last week, the devastating loss that Florida pinned on them. And Southern Mississippi wins it. And of course, that helps Tennessee as far as the Sugar Bowl is concerned. Second and eight. Culver dives into Tennessee territory at the 46. And it looks like a Notre Dame first down. Number 
Tennessee has come out, made some adjustments, and right now has 139 yards total offense this quarter, while Notre Dame has just 77, and they've done it quickly. Well, they've driven it 79 yards for a touchdown in a minute 20 seconds, and then 80 yards for a touchdown in a little over two minutes time of possession. I guess you can call Andy Kelly a curator of clocks. <laughs> Just maintaining that time and making it very, very productive. It is an Irish first down at the 46 of the Volunteers. So many track guys down there. It's starting to look like a track meet. Still 9.22 left in this quarter, and they've been lighting up the scoreboard. Pete Cordelli's project. Quarterback Rick Meyer driving the Irish right back. Sean Davis wide open as Meyer threw across his body. It was a nice pass by Meyer. Davis fought it a little bit, was off balance. Davis is another one of those guys that's converted. Played seven games last year at cornerback. and 10. Culver gets away from Fletcher and stumbles down at the 40-yard line, set up about third and four. Rodney Carter, Culver rather, trying to wake up the echoes. Here's a guy came into the game with 595 yards, leading ball carry, averages five yards a carry. He's the single back. Three receivers to the left with a rocket in the middle. On third and four. Colbert, no first down. About a yard shy is Ernest Fields. Made a good tackle on Colbert. What do you do here, Tim? Well, personally, I'd punt, but Lou Holtz is uh, thinking otherwise. He's going to go ahead and send in another tight end. They've got fourth down. It's almost, what you say, two? Fourth and, uh, yes, fourth and about two. Maybe a little bit under that, but he's going for it. Told us last night when we asked him about this type of situation, how do you make the call? He says, well, I've got to feel it in the ball game. The Rocket has single coverage at the top of your screen. Irv Smith, the extra tight end. Culver runs it, and I believe he has it inside the 36-yard line. First down, Notre Dame. Midway third quarter, we've already seen three touchdowns scored here in the electrifying third. You know, Lou Holt says, I've got to feel it once we're in the ball game. I don't think there's a better game coach in the business than Lou Holtz, and nobody has better feelings than he does. Great instincts. Tony Brooks for a short gain of maybe three into the wall of defenders, including Chuck Smith. And let's go down to our man, John Dockery. You know, Jim, I'm just putting my, myself in the place of Dale Carr, the free safety, and you know he's overshadowing the rocket. The Tennessee defense is so concerned with the rocket that if you watch, he's in the slot, and on the back side is Derek Brown, all 6'7", 240 pounds, with not much coverage on him. I don't understand why Notre Dame isn't going more to Derek Brown on the back side. Well, maybe they're setting him up, Doc. The Goshen motion leans back and talks to Brooks, and will take the snap here on second and seven. Smothered at the 27, a yard shy of the first. Take a look at where Notre Dame's been running the ball. There's no question that was the game plan coming in. Most of it has been in the middle, as we told you early on. When you deal with a defense that has a lot of speed, you use angle blocks to cut off the pursuit. Then you attack the soft middle. They've been doing that, and they've been rather successful. Waters, Culver, and Adrian Jarrell in the backfield on third and one. 
Culver leaning for it, and I believe he has it at the 25. Culver carries. Under the left side of the Tennessee line. First and 10, Murray. It is enough for the first. You know, Doc was looking at Derek Brown, said he was virtually uncovered. They don't go to Brown very often. Came into this game with nine receptions. Scouts say he's a lot like Keith Jackson or Kellen Winslow, but you remember, never, nobody ever threw to Keith Jackson out there at Oklahoma either. But he's a fine receiver. They just don't go to him. Lined up tight on the right on first down. Meyer out of bounds and another first down at the 14. Out of bounds by Lincoln. That's an outstanding play. You set up the option on the left side. Everybody goes that way. You bring the quarterback draw back to the other side. Now, here's the strength of 86 in white, Derek Brown. They may not throw to him, but look, he makes that play go because he's an outstanding blocker. And because of his size, 6'7", 243 pounds, he engulfs the smaller guys on the corner like he did just then and open it up for Meyer. We asked Derek about the lack of passes his way during his career. He says, hey, only stat I care about, I'm 31 and 2. Ricky Waters on a first down carry to the 11th. Daryl Hardy on the tackle. That's a pretty indicative statistic, too. You know, you only lose two games since the beginning of 1988. That means that Notre Dame has won quite a bit on the road. Their only losses to Miami and Stanford. They win the big games on the road. This crowd doesn't intimidate the Irish. Second down, six. The Rocket in the Triple House backfield gets the run. Down to the six, a yard short of the first. Ernest Fields on the tackle. He's just not running like the Rocket that we know. You know, he had the flu on Monday. He's got a turf toe. He's got four carries now for six yards, and very rarely do you see him get tripped up like that with one arm. He's going out on this play. Going out on third and short. Call it a yard. Culver, Brooks, and Waters in the backfield. Waters won't make it. Carry Bailey on the hit. I guess that's what you could call a Bailey's Irish cream. <laughs> All right, look at number 53. Bailey steps up, tucks a tail, bang. Take him down right now. You call it a Bailey's Irish cream. I call it a slobber knocker. Nonetheless, it's the same result. Craig Hendrick will come in to kick a field goal that can tie the game. High snap. Sexton gets it down. Flag is down as the kick goes through the goal post. And if it's offsides against Tennessee, it would give Notre Dame a first down. And they'll take those points off the board, too, and come back and drive this thing in. Violation Nick was on defensive team offside at the distance. That's what's going to happen. They'll take those points back, and they'll bring the offense on and go after the touchdown. They want the full package. One guy jumps, they all jump. Four, five, six guys before the ball's snapped. Twice now on special teams, Tennessee has jumped. Remember the long punt right before the half, where they almost blocked it here. Notre Dame will take the three off the board and have it first and goal from the three. When you have a team that is good and outstanding as a rushing team or a blocking team, use those long counts. Make them be disciplined. Rockets back in there along with Brooks and Waters. It's Brooks for nothing at all. Second and goal.
the board. You think the Irish will be second guessed? Watch this. Here comes the play. Stripped by Hardy. His helmet goes in, knocks the ball loose, and then here comes Lincoln, 25. He makes the recovery. It's just this triple option. Boom, Hardy. There it is right there. Strips it clean. The ball's loose, and then Lincoln from the outside comes in and makes the recovery. They say never take points off the board. It was a good gamble by Notre Dame, but it backfired. You really have to do that, though, when you got it set up first and goal with the three. Sure you do. I say it was a good gamble. You take them off and try to get the touchdown. Now trying for the big strike. Pickens out there will not chase it down. Rod Smith and George Foreman converged on Pickens. Very rarely will I say that that guy makes a mistake, and I don't think that was a mistake either, but I'm saying the soothsayers out there, the guys that are just waiting to pounce, they will look and say, never take the points off the board. This time it backfired. You've got a team like Notre Dame. You're ranked number one in the nation. They move you halfway down, give you a first down to the goal line. You take it, you try to score a touchdown. Second and ten. Over to Harper. Tackled at the nine, and let's head you up the coast. Here it's third down and about four. Third and four for Tennessee. Incomplete. Tennessee will have to punt out of its end zone. You know, Southern Mississippi. Gets the double this year. Alabama and Auburn for Curly Hallman, the coach of the Golden Eagles. How about that? You like to see it. You talked about parity. We talked about it at halftime. Affirmation, Come on, please. Under no pressure, trying to set up a rocket return from the 50. He's got it. Out of bounds at the 11. You could see it set up so perfectly by the Notre Dame return team. The minute the Rocket touched the football, you take into account his speed, that you knew he was going to break it for a long one. You do everything you can to hold him, contain him. He's touched the ball seven times today, and for six times, you contain him. You stop him. You shut him down. It's that one play. He's like an electrical shock. You touch him, and he's gone. He'll bite you. So with 1.56 left in the third quarter, Notre Dame's right back, threatening again. The Goshen motion. Keeps it. And dives to the two. Very close to the first down yardage on the carry by Rick Meyer. Lou Holtz and his son set it to play in. Second and one. He comes up a yard shot. Son Skip Holtz, the wide receiver coach at Notre Dame. Waters does not get the first. Waters carries. Oh, defense! It's third. One more time. Final minute of a tremendously exciting third quarter. Notre Dame. 2017. Third and two. Tony Brooks. I don't think so. Chuck Smith cut him under. It's fourth down. Standing play by Smith, too, because what he did is he sliced the right side like you do in a short yardage. Boom. He's already in the past the line of scrimmage, and he's using the arm to cut down the runner. It is fourth and one. Lou Holmes is going to get a lot of time to think it over. He'll let the clock expire in the third quarter. When we come back, the nation's number one team will fight for victory in quarter number four. 
Our coverage will continue after this message. We are looking at Notre Dame place kicker Craig Hendrick. He has entered the game and will attempt a field goal to tie it. Lou Holtz, during the change of quarters, had a change of heart and will not go for it on fourth and one from the three. He'll instead attempt a 20-yarder that can tie it at 20. Hendrick delivers. So, four seconds into the fourth quarter, we are deadlocked at 2020. Notre Dame's been down there banging. They've been banging. They've been knocking at the door, and they haven't been able to get the touchdown. This is a defense for Tennessee that's only allowed one rushing touchdown since the Colorado game, game one. this week's Toyota Leadership Award to the players singled out by their school's coaching and faculty staff for outstanding performance in both academics and citizenship. The winners, Ryan Mahoko from Notre Dame out of Pelham, New Hampshire, over a 3.0 great, great point average, very active in Christmas and April program that helps the needy families. And Charles McRae of Tennessee. Charles is also very active in his community. Speaking to local schools and participating in the Big Brothers and Big Sisters program. Congratulations as each young man will see a check for $1,000 donated in their name to their school's general scholarship fund. Faulkner finally finds the handle at the five. Oh, is he wrapped up at the 17. And let's go down to John Dockery. You know, Jim, Tennessee fans are wondering what it might have been if Chuck Webb hadn't hurt his knee earlier in the season. Chuck, uh, how's it coming along? Do you think you'll make it back? Well, it's 100% now. I'm um, working hard at rehab, and we're trying to get it back to normal. You expect to be back next year? Uh, hopefully. The doctor says it's a good chance that I will regain my knee 100%, and I'm working hard at it. What might have this season been like and this game been like if you were playing? Um, I think it would have been a little different. The score, it, it wouldn't be tired 2020 in fourth quarter. You know, uh, we would score a lot more points. How is the team doing overall as you see it? I think it's doing pretty good. You know, uh, they're finding their strengths and weaknesses that, that they didn't have when I was playing. And they're um, adding on to our offensive power with Tony and uh, Elvin Harper. Thank you, Chuck. And Jim, 1,200 yards, 12 touchdowns last year for Chuck Webb. What might it have been like if he were here? Well, I think he told us. <laughs> he hurt his knee, but he didn't. What would he be like with confidence? Didn't lose his modesty. Incomplete pass. Intended, I guess, for Carl Pickens. Bryant Young put a hit in on that special teams tackle. And it was banged up a bit as you look at Derek Brown on the sidelines. You know, we kid him, but Chuck Webb is right. I think with Webb in that backfield, they're number one in the nation. They're only six points away from it now. They had a couple of ties and then the one upset to Alabama but with Webb back there makes a major difference and that's nothing taken away nothing from Thompson I saw him rush for 250 in the Cotton Bowl last January 1 scrambling out is Kelly and picking up a first down out across the 30 to the 32 yard line a gain of 15 We've got another update for you, folks. Let's send you back to New York. Andrea? Washington has been so dominant. Now they're in a fight today. Here's an inside give to Vince Moore. And on the short side of the field, he picks up only about four. As Rod Smith stayed at home. Like the old Syracuse scissors play. Bring him off the wing, bring him underneath on the inside handoff. They were banking on the fact that Notre Dame would over pursue to the right side. He'd come back to the left. You see the time of possession this half. Of course, Tennessee with a couple of quick strikes. Two touchdowns in less than three and a half minutes. Second down three. They actually had seven yards on the carry by Moore. And that's Amsler near the first down yardage. Tackled by Andre Jones. Stop, 
Andre Jones back in the lineup today after missing the Pitt and Navy games for Notre Dame with a thigh contusion. His brother Clarence graduated from West Point and now attending law school at Illinois. And Clarence was Army's top rusher for three years. I'll tell you, there's a running back right now at Army who is very overshadowed this year, Mike Mayweather. I think he's our nation's top military secret. He's over 1,000 yards. Look at Amsler. He doesn't have the speed, but he's got the power in the football into Notre Dame territory. How quickly now they're operating on offense. Amsler comes out, Poles goes back into the game. What a hit put on him by Stonebreaker. You heard Major say that they were playing salty. Look at this. Here's 42 shooting the gap. That's Mike Stonebreaker. They've been moving Zorge to the outside. He's a contained guy. They move Stonebreaker once or twice to the outside. They're moving him around where they think he will be the most effective. That time they brought him on the blitz, and he sold out. Thompson again. Stonebreaker has him again. Michael Stonebreaker back-to-back -back plays. Watch him hunt down 24 here. Of course, he's the leading tackler. See, he's got that good speed, breaks down and makes it. Quite a story. Stonebreaker, auto accident, broken kneecap, dislocated hip, graduated last spring, has a penchant for the big play. Third and 15. Pickett's wide open. First down, Tennessee at the Notre Dame 32-yard line. A 21-yard gain. And this was easy pickings for Tennessee as no one was near him across the middle. He's the man in the slot, the second receiver in. Always the most dangerous. They use four wide outs. It's a zone defense by Notre Dame, and you bring him under again the safety and by the linebacker. You know something interesting? Major said Pickens is the greatest natural athlete he's ever coached. Remember, Major's coach Tony Dorsett. Thompson off the pitch. And Greg Davis holds on to him at the 28-yard line. A gain of four on the play. 11.50 left in the game. Tied at 20. What do you want? What, that? What do you want? What, that? What do you want? What, that? This is Tennessee's first game against the number one team since 1985 when the Vols beat Auburn and Bo Jackson, 38-20. Roland Poles stuffed. Stuffed by Boo Williams. Third down play coming up. Third and about seven. Davis makes a tackle to stop him well short of the first. Tennessee will attempt the field goal that could put him back in front. Craig Burke, the place kicker, has had some trouble this year. Missed a 31-yarder against Auburn as the game ended. Would have given Tennessee a victory instead of a tie. Then had a kick blocked against Alabama in the closing minutes. Alabama won that one. This is 45 yards for Greg Burke. Splits the sticks. Just under 10 minutes left. 
Tennessee has taken the lead back. Me and Tim Brandt, and I'm Jim Nance from Neyland Stadium in Knoxville. Michael Stonebreaker came up with a couple of big hits on that last Tennessee series, but the ball still net a field goal that puts him back ahead, 23-20. Been very effective on these kickoffs by Chapman. High and short has stunted any kind of return on the kickoff returns for Rocket. Here he is from the 17. And out to the 37 yard line. As far as scoring today, Burke kicked the field goal. Meyer then threw the longest touchdown pass of his career at Notre Dame, 59 yards to Culver. Burke added a field goal in the first, 7 6 Irish. In the second, Hendrick made it 10-6 Notre Dame. That was the halftime score. Thompson kicked or scored to make it Tennessee 13-10 right at the start of the third quarter. Ricky Waters for a gain of about two as Kerry Bailey brings him down. 13-10 Tennessee when Ricky Waters ran 66 yards, put Notre Dame back in front. Tennessee exploded. Harper, 32-yard touchdown over Todd Light. Hendrick tied it on the first play of the fourth quarter. And now Burke has answered with a 45-yarder, and the Vols lead it 23-20. Second and eight, Derek Brown wrapped up at the 42, short of the first. Sean Walker made the tackle. Myers hit just two of his last seven passes. His mile still has no catches. He's handled it only eight times. The Irish have been inside the Tennessee 30, or inside their 20, rather, three times, and they've only gotten two field goals out of it. Third down and five with 8.40 left in the game. The down clock has expired. They don't know it yet. Somebody better tell Meyer that he doesn't have any time left. The officials are telling. There's a case where the crowd noise had an effect. He tried to use his hands to let the wide receivers know about the play. Dead ball, delay a game. Okay. I tell you, there was a delay, though, in that penalty being called. Not only did Meyer not know, the officials sat there and waited while the clock set on zero. Is a true sophomore, but he's got to be aware now and think like a veteran. He's able to do that. He's capable of it. 8.27 remaining. You're number one in the nation. You've got to watch the little things like the clock. Third and ten. Notre Dame. Meyer appeals to the back judge. Here again, this rule is different than it is in the pros. It doesn't matter if your wide receivers can hear you or not. That doesn't matter. It's seven yards from the middle, seven yards on both sides of the center. If those people can hear you, then that official won't give you a, a stoppage. He will not stop the play. Lou Holtz and his son to his right, to our right. to the rocket. the rocket and they've done it everywhere he goes he draws a crowd everybody's staying at home they're not overrunning the plays and they stop rocket that time give chuck smith and carrie bailey credit for that seven yard loss big punt by hendrick carter from the 24. and with 727 left in the game tennessee has the football and the lead we're in Knoxville, 
Tennessee, where 97,000 people, second largest in history, are assembled here at Neyland Stadium, and during that timeout, Notre Dame trailing by three, they talked to Michael Stonebreaker, the key for the Irish defense. You might see him doing some blitzing. If not, he has to get deeper and cover pickings across the middle on those crossing patterns that have been killing the Irish all afternoon. Jim Nance? Tennessee has it, first and 10 from its 30-yard line. Leading 23-20. Staying up top, or will they? Kills the clock at the 31-yard line. Andy Kelly now 24 for 40, 267 yards and a touchdown. And that's a great afternoon for that guy. He came into this game with only four touchdowns and 10 interceptions. But mentally, he's been outstanding all day, picking the right receivers. Second and nine, zips it over to Pickens. Again, out of bounds. They're not using much of the clock right now, are they? No, but watch this, Jim. They have been successful with those crossing patterns. We told you at the top of the game, they watched Stanford do it against Notre Dame. They run out the safety, throw underneath in the middle. Last time, because of the deep drop by Stonebreaker that Doc was talking about, now they're going to go pick on the corners again. They're going to go to the corners and soften the middle back up. Well, it's third and four right now with 7-10 remaining. Tony Thompson does not get the first. That was a very unproductive possession for Tennessee. Their play calling has changed. Remember how pass happy they were in the first half? In the second half, they've gone 16 runs and 15 passes. Trying to catch Notre Dame shifting players on and off the field. They snap it back to Andy Kelly, who also punts. They may have forced Notre Dame to burn a timeout with all the confusion. That's exactly what happened. They went to the quick kick on third down, and Notre Dame had to take one of its timeouts. Fourth down, rather. But it took one of their timeouts, and now they're down to two. So they did that. Had they caught Notre Dame without the timeout, it would have been offsides against or too many men on the field for Notre Dame and would have given Tennessee a first down. So Notre Dame has two timeouts remaining. Tennessee has three. change punters now. Andy Kelly, the quarterback, had attempted to cross up Notre Dame. He goes out and Joey Chapman returns. Notre Dame blocked three punts this year. Uh-oh. Shank City. Boy, that's critical, too. Notre Dame will have great field position. Where are they going to spot it? Right at the 43-yard line. That's only 20 yards on the punt. Looked like one of your pitching wedges. Notre Dame set up. We're back with Notre Dame in possession of the football at its own 43-yard line. Trailing by a field goal. Meyer to Culver. Oh, he holds on with that stick. Floyd Miley decked him. But Culver holds on for a 20-yard gain. Play action. Meyer looks and threads it perfectly. But look at the hit. Boom. Miley comes up and just nails Culver. And to Culver's credit, the... Part-time IBM employee takes it down with him and holds on. From the Tennessee 37. Slashing Ricky Waters. Oh, is he running strong today. That's a 13-yard gain for Waters. 
and he now has a new career rushing record. Waters, 14 carries, 142 yards. Watch Held on Moore right here. Held is the Notre Dame center. Watch him fire out now. Look, he locks on with his block and just rides him five yards out of the play. Waters comes underneath, and there's absolutely nobody in the middle. First down, Waters again. To the 10. A gain of 14. All right, this is where Notre Dame has had trouble all afternoon against Tennessee. They've been inside the 30 three times and come away with only two field goals. Rocket still has no catches. He goes to the top of the screen wide right. Waters remains the tailback out of the eye on first down. Waters. Waters, touchdown, Notre Dame. Hendrick drills it. 27-23, Notre Dame. Took him only four plays to find the checkerboard paradise. This is the guy you want to watch right here as he comes up and he'll lead that block. That's Bettis. This is the kind of block you want on your containment. Ride him out of there. Waters comes underneath. And if the linebackers aren't pursuing, scraping down the line, then it's going to be a touchdown every time. That contained man has to come up, force flood back everything inside the pursuit. When you get ground like that, you're going to lose it. You can just sense the Notre Dame faithful sweating this one out. Legends like Ara Parsegan watching from Tucson, Arizona with family today. Guys like Regis Philbin up in New York, the biggest Notre Dame fan of all. I don't think Regis called that play. I'll tell you what, this game keeps going like this the last 5.30. Those kids doing those push-ups, every time there's a score, they're going to be worn out. Vince Moore on the return. Tackled at the 26 by Devon McDonald. Lofting it, almost intercepted. Rod Smith tried to dive for it, and let's right now take it down sidelines to John Dockery. Obviously, Jim, moment of truth for Notre Dame. Interesting that the senior leadership that Lou challenged earlier took hold. It was Zorich and it was Stonebreaker who got their defense together and said, hey, right now, it's now or never, and we got to do it. That time, we saw Zorich pressuring the quarterback. Back to you guys. Second and 10. Pass play batted down. Bob Dahl got a hand on it. Put up a big paw. coming up for Tennessee. Pickens, first down, and bangs around at the 
the 50-yard line. Boy, that ball was drilled, too, by that guy, Andy Kelly. Notre Dame came with only a three-man rush, so there's absolutely no pressure. But look at him step up in a pocket and drill it. And Pickens in the seam again. In that zone defense that Notre Dame's playing, makes the catch and gets the first. Only a sophomore. He'll be a first-rounder when he gets older. Tenth catch of the game for Pickens. Kelly feels the heat of Boo Williams and Zorich and loses two. He thought he felt the heat. When he watches the films, he's going to say, well, I bailed out a little bit too early. Offensive line was giving him great protection. There wasn't anybody within five yards of him. He could have hung in there and thrown it a little bit longer, maybe, or waited a little bit longer, and he did. Still a smart play, though. He stopped the clock at 447. Jim Nance, Tim Brandt, and John Dockery for the final 447. Notre Dame leads at 27-23. Third down play, little trickery to Vince Moore. And he's got the first down, but there are flags everywhere. Mark Adams with an illegal block, I'm afraid, for Tennessee. During the run, clipping, clipping on the offensive team, 15-yard penalty. If you're Notre Dame, that's a big break. If you're Tennessee, you want to shoot yourself because they were the well-played, well-designed offensive play that time. They ran the option. Stonebreaker was coming. He was applying the pressure, and they bring it back against the grain. There was nobody there. So that'll back it up to the 41 of Tennessee. It's actually second down, second down, 19 to go. Three receivers in the game. Over the head of Alvin Harper. Look how big that penalty is now. It'll bring up third down in a taxi ride. Moore would have had the first if it wasn't a clipping play on the other reverse. Andy Kelly trying to rally back the Volunteers. Grew up a T Tennessee fan. Says it's a dream to be playing in this game today. Third and 19. Intercepted Don Grimm. Tackled by Pickens. And the Notre Dame defense, like it did against Miami, comes up with a big play late. That's something that's plagued that guy Andy Kelly all year. Came into the game with 10 interceptions, throws his 11th here. And if you watch it, you'll see that it's a terrible pass. He throws it right into coverage. And there's three guys around Pickens. Look at this. How's it? There's no way he can get that ball to Carl Pickens right now. It's a poor throw, bad decision. Here's an unheralded Notre Dame defender. Has been his whole career. Don Grimm, younger brother of Russ Grimm of the Redskins. Now Ricky Waters, who's been the star today for the Irish. Still running strong inside of the 45 of Tennessee. Well, Notre Dame wants to work that clock. And with Waters flowing, they can do it. <laughs> Floyd Miley is getting some help on the field. Had the wind knocked at him. Anytime they pull your pants like that, trying to get some air back inside. That's a terrible feeling. You're laying there, you can't breathe, you can't get your breath. But I never figured out what that does, pulling your pants up like that. <laughs> <laughs> well, good chance to tell everybody next week we've got a doubleheader. Texas and TCU started off Southwest Conference battle. You think I'm going to touch that one? 12 <laughs> o'clock Eastern time. And then it's uh, these very same Tennessee Volunteers going against Ole Miss in a game that could determine the SEC champion. 
CFA coverage beginning at 12 Eastern next Saturday here on CBS. Andrea Joyce and Mike Francesa will have the college football today starting at 12. We don't want to make light of anybody that gets a little bit shaken up. Miley appears to be okay. He's replaced by Dave Thomas. Junior college transfer from Miami, Florida. And Waters, after the eight-yard run, sets it up as second and two for the Irish. Here comes the rocket. He gets the corner. Look out! Goodbye! Touchdown, Notre Dame! And the strategy works once again. They bring in the explosive rocket in the fourth quarter. And with a little fatigue on the defensive side of the field, he's able to get the extra jump and break the big play. Watch the block by Derek Brown on the corner. See him 86, seal in the corner. That allows Rocket to get around that corner, outside of containment, down the sidelines. Let me tell you that Rocket Ismail had only five carries for minus one yard before this play. But you let him touch the football, and eventually he's going to get you. He just went down the line, strung things out, and once he got the corner, nobody's going to catch him. And he, too, finds that checkerboard paradise and that may be checkmate for Notre Dame. back to that possession where Tennessee had the football and the lead with seven minutes seven and change left in the game 23 20 they had two straight plays that ended up going out of bounds stopping the clock and the shank punt back has come Notre Dame I don't think a ball game ever comes down to just one or two plays. How about the reverse to Moore? Moore picks up the first down but with the penalty instead now it's second and 19. Quibbit. Here comes Moore from the 15. Slides to the 33-yard line. Andy Kelly has 325 left in the game. And all three timeouts remaining for the Volunteers. Well, if you're Johnny Majors, you know you need two scores. You have 325 left, so right now you've got to start not only using those timeouts, but you've got to use the clock. You've got to use the sidelines to be your ally. There's a completion to Pickens right at midfield. That's his 11th catch of the game. Totaling 145 in the yardage department. And that's just the kind of play that Johnny Majors wants. It took seven seconds, stopped the clock. Made the catch, got out of bounds. Three eighteen left, but down two scores. No Tennessee receiver in sight. Now Anthony Morgan about 10 yards short of it. Foreman and Davis back there. And UCLA given Washington fits today. An Ohio State upset Iowa on the final play of the game. You saw the Georgia Tech score, so the Yellow Jackets stay unbeaten. Houston plays Texas tonight, the other unbeaten team. Another orange UT 
going after it tonight. Second down play to Amsler. Amsler about a yard shy of the first at the Notre Dame 42-yard line. Eric Jones brought him down. We're under three minutes now. And the clock's still moving. Third and a yard. Gets the first to Pickens at the 35-yard line. Against Colorado in the Pigskin Classic, Andy Kelly was the game's most valuable player as he rallied the Volunteers from 14 down in the fourth quarter. He threw for over 200 yards in that fourth quarter alone and two touchdowns against the Buffaloes as the game ended in a 31-31 tie. Here comes Stonebreaker. Got a piece of the arm of Kelly as he fires it out of bounds. Throwing again at Pickens. Pickens' next catch will break the school record with 13 catches, but I think more importantly, he'd rather have the win and forget the record. Talking to Lou Holtz last night, says he's never worked as hard coaching as he has this year. He's only getting four hours sleep a night. He's been doing it with mirrors, but he continues to win. A great game day coach. The best. Amsler fumbles the football, recovered by Tennessee. Stonebreaker jarred it loose, and John Fisher, the center, fell on it. Now a timeout called by the Vols. It's the first one they've used, leaving them with two. 2.23 left in the game. There's still time for number nine, Tennessee. The Hills of the Smokies and Neyland Stadium. 97,000 fans have not given up yet as Tennessee has the football at the Notre Dame 27-yard line. Final two minutes, 23 seconds left to go. Facing a third and two, the Vols. Safe pass. First down to Harper. And he's out of bounds at the 21 to stop the clock. All right, they're going under stem man free. So they're going to keep a guy free back there. They're going to keep two deep, probably play zone underneath. Intended for Roland Poles, his fullback. Actually, they, what they did, Jim, is they locked up man for man everywhere except for Foreman, the safety. And the safety played free, just like you called. You see, again, they're going to go man free. You see Gary Darnell here sending in the defensive signals, but Lou Holtz is now making the calls. Essentially, what's going to happen here is number 27, George Foreman, the junior, is going to play free, and everybody else is going to go man. Tennessee has called a timeout. Only one remaining. Tennessee against the number one teams through the years. A victory over number one LSU in 59, beating Billy Cannon and company. And 85 defeated Bo Jackson in Auburn. But trailing here is Kelly. He trips backpedaling. Boy, and that keeps the clock rolling, too. You're about to come under two minutes. Same thing. Same thing. Plus, it's third down here. Third, and we'll call it 12 to go. Harper is wide open. Touchdown. He almost has to with 144 left in the ball game. It's 34-29. Goes to two and makes it 31. A field goal then if he gets the ball back to tie the score.
receivers to the right. Two-point try through the hands of Vince Moore. Kelly makes an outstanding read on this. You saw Harper come open, gets behind the secondary, and then he has great concentration with a hand going up after the ball and pulls it in. Two-point conversion. Kelly's upset at himself here because he had Vince Moore open and drilled it. See, Moore was still underneath number 42 Stonebreaker. All you had to do is just kind of drop it right in there. Instead, he threw it high and overthrew him. Little rocky top. In the hopes, still alive, riding on an onside kick. I think that band will pick up the beat a little bit if they get this kick back. Look at number three out there on the kick team for Notre Dame, kick receiving team, Rick Meyer. All right, why would you have your quarterback there? You want the best athletes out there for the onside kick, the guys with the best hands, guys that are the best athletes to recover the onside. Great hands of Lake Dawson at the top of the screen for Notre Dame. 144 left. What a finish. Kelly behind his receiver, Harper. All right, you don't want to panic here. Tennessee still has one timeout remaining, 139 remaining on the clock. That's an awful lot of time. Plus, you have great field position just inside the 47-yard line. You want to be deliberate. You don't want to make any bad decisions. Here we go, Tennessee. Tennessee from its 47-yard line, second and 10. Underneath, first down at the 41. Mark Adams. Clock should stop now. Let him move the chains. It does at 131. Is Tennessee on its way? So knocking off number one ranked Notre Dame. That's been a tough spot to hold all year. We've seen four teams drop it. Hamsworth near another first down at the 30. And it's a big mark because it'll stop the clock again to move the chains at 114. It is a first down for Tennessee. 7,000 fans in a frenzy. His ninth-ranked Tennessee is driving, trying to win the game against number one Notre Dame. <laughs> Dives for the first and gets it. So the clock stops at a minute. This Notre Dame secondary that has been examined and maligned all season now faces its toughest test. 20 yards to victory for Tennessee. Under a minute to go. Toward the end zone, intercepted, Rod Smith. Rod Smith saves the day. He should just fall on it. And there it is, that secondary comes up with that play. But no one thought they would. Lou Holtz 
says he's never worked harder coaching in his entire career. He spent all his time with his secondary. They're in a zone. Smith comes over, makes the pick. Now, why didn't he down it there? Because he wasn't sure what the official would think. His momentum carried him in or whether he was actually in the end zone. So he goes ahead, brings it back out, and carries it out to the 17. It's the defense, believe it or not, that wins for Notre Dame. Tennessee can only stop it once. Rick Meyer will just drop to a knee. The oh, Irish yeah. are going to continue at number one with Penn State and Southern Cal still ahead in the regular season. Boy, Notre Dame's defense had given up an awful lot. 400 yards a game, held only one team under 19 points. Navy scored 31. They come up with a big one here. A celebration on the Notre Dame sideline and congratulations in order for Rod Smith, who came up with the saving interception here in the final minute. can almost detect a little smile, just a small one, ever so slight, for Lou Holtz. Interesting, isn't it? Pulled out all the stops, played a couple of running backs that are freshmen in the secondary to shift things up, get guys' attention, try to goose the defense a little bit, and it works. They won't even snap it again. Improves to eight and one on the season. Johnny Majors and Lou Holtz. It's a great football game, John Dockery. Coach, you told us the defense would play when they had to, and they did. We played well. We made a lot of good big plays. This was a team effort. We beat a fine football team in a tough environment. It's great to win. We're glad to fight to get out of here. A lot of big plays by a lot of people. Your seniors responded to the challenge that you gave them. We took a little different approach coming down here. We thought we were going to look at it as a positive side of it. We just want to come down here and play. We know we got a tough road to hoe, but I'm very proud of our players and our coaches. We competed, and that's all we could do. Congratulations. You remain number one, Coach. Good I luck don't to know you. about that, but we're glad to win. Okay. Jim Nance? 